I've brought up the sample app here in Visual Studio Code, my preferred editor of choice. Cypress tests are written in JavaScript, and by default, they're stored in the integration folder shown here under the Cypress directory. Let's create a new JavaScript file representing our responsive design test suite. Cypress uses Mocha and Chai for testing, which should look familiar if you have experience with other JavaScript testing libraries. There are a few global functions that help you write tests. The first is the describe function, which groups a block of tests. In it, I can further nest more describe blocks. Why don't we group by the expected device context being viewed? First, let's focus on the phone test cases. At the start of any Cypress test suite, you have to load up a URL. For these phone-based tests, I want to run each test case in portrait and landscape sizes to ensure the app looks the same no matter what orientation the device is in. I can add each orientation to an array and then use for each and I'll group them using a describe block where I'll substitute the orientation in so that when I see the test run in Cypress, they'll be grouped together. Within this describe block, in order to specify the correct viewport for each test, I can use the before each test hook and use the side.viewport command to set the size using an iPhone 6 preset and pass the orientation value. The iPhone 6 size represents a good testing size for us, but there are several other phone preset sizes available. Next, we'll write out each test case. This first test will test whether the app displays the menu navigation button. Then we'll need two more test cases. After displaying the menu navigation button, we should be able to open the menu and close it. The phone size should also not display marketing imagery. It's important we sometimes include the exception test cases as well to ensure that we aren't accidentally rendering the wrong thing to the user since implementing responsive design can sometimes be pretty complex. We'll use the sci.git command and pass our ion menu button element selector and then we'll use the should function to assert that the element is visible. Okay, let's check Cypress and see what happened. We can see the sci.git command was executed and it found the ion menu button and the assertion passed. You'll probably be inspecting your application quite a bit to understand what selectors to use to pass to the commands, but once you get it, it works pretty well. For the second test case, you don't need to watch me type, so I'll just fill it in. We're using the same selector syntax we used before, but we're using the click command to trigger opening the menu. Once the menu is open, we can use a special command to find an element by its role. In HTML, there are implicit roles for many elements such as buttons or links, and in this case, the Ionic menu has a role of navigation which helps screen readers understand that they are viewing a navigation menu. Notice this wait for Ionic animations command. This is a custom Cypress command I made that waits for the default Ionic animation timeout because otherwise the test seems to be a bit flaky. Unfortunately, what you'll quickly learn when doing any kind of functional UI test is that sometimes you'll have to work around quirks with the timing in the interface. In order to close the menu, we click in the top right corner and then we assert that the menu should not be visible anymore. Now I'll fill in the third test case. For this test, we're making sure that the marketing imagery doesn't appear. If we look at the Cypress test runner, we can see the phone tests are implemented and passing. That was pretty quick, but you could see the menu opening and closing. How's that for automation?